So today's story time about how I got injured here in Colombia and went through the whole procedure with the emergency room and all of that. So I got injured here in uh, Colombia while doing sports. Um, I want to take you through the whole process. So. Uh, I think it's very interesting because, yeah, not everybody goes to goes to that uh, that kind of experience. But uh, yeah, it can be interesting to to maybe it will help you to make the decision if you want to go to Latin America or not. Um, yeah, it, it was quite. It, the story has like two sides. One is very positive, and one is not so positive. So I was quite shocked some somehow how the Latin American uh, health system works here, like really in action. Usually on this uh, on this channel we focus more on the positive sides of uh, Latin America because it has a lot of positive sides. But this, yeah, I don't want to shock people or I don't want to disencourage people. But here on the on this channel we try to to keep it realistic. We can try to keep it real so you get uh, the best chance to see if Latin America uh, being an expert in Latin America could, could be something for you. So. I want to take you uh, with me through the, the whole story here. Uh, first of all, a little background. So I was in a hospital in Switzerland. I'm a Swiss guy already twice had an operation uh, or surgery there because uh, I played around seven years uh, American football and I broke my collarbone twice. So maybe my view, because I, I was in Switzerland, one of the best, I was private insured at the time through my, uh, through my work. So uh, what I've experienced with hospitals, probably the, the top-notch hospital uh, experience you can get in Switzerland with private insurance, with one of the best doctors uh, probably in the world. So I may be a little bit spoiled, but what I've saw here in Latin America, like if you re do your research about Latin America, you will find that they will say, yeah, Latin America has some of the best uh, hospitals, uh, in the world and it's a quite first world experience and all the kind of stuff and I was quite shocked how it really was when I actually did it so this is what, what I'm, I want to share with you um, so yeah so how did it happen so I, I played sports then I ran really uh, normal and then I felt my hamstring pop and first I thought it was uh, yeah the, the muscle was completely off the bone so I was okay uh, this is not good, we have to call the ambulance. Um, so yeah, we did that. So the ambulance uh, came around 30 to 40 minutes because uh, later than when we called. Because here it's, it's uh, you call the ambulance and they will send out, I don't know how it exactly it works, but it's not like a public thing, so it not the, 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 the ambulance from some hospital comes, but it's a private hospital, it's like taxi. So. They send out many uh, different like of these ambulances and whichever comes first to the spot will get paid. So um, yeah, we as I said, we ra waited around 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, it was service was okay, but if I would do it again, I would easily go take a taxi or something like that because it's way, way faster. So I was quite disappointed in, in the ambulance uh, here. Of course, I have no hard feelings. Uh, I, I know that I'm, La I'm in Latin America and ta things will, will take longer. So yeah, that's just pretty much what, what I expected. But yeah, it's not really a great service. So I went into the ambulance with a Colombian friend. Uh, this is really the best uh, decision I've made to, to uh, like, I speak Spanish, but it's better if you have a native Spanish speaker. And yeah, it cost the ambulance itself, it cost 150,000 US pesos, which is around 50 US dollars. So that's really a joke. So like the, the, the taxi from where I was to the hospital should have maybe was, should have uh, costed like three or four US dollars. So yeah, that's, that was really a joke, but yeah, okay. So then, um, of course, I have to, with, with that ambulance, you have to decide where you want to go. So I went to the best hospital here in, uh, in Medellin, which is called Hospital Pablo Tobón Uribe. So uh, we went there. Um, fortunately, before every trip I do, um, I pick out the best hospitals in the area. So right when it happened, I already knew which hospital I wanted to go to. So. This is really a tip I can uh, recommend to everybody. 
to make a list with hospitals, I put it on Google Maps. So when I was laying on the ground, uh, I, I knew uh, sadly where the hospital was. I just looked it up and then we were ready to go. <laughs> of course, it took like uh, 30 to 40 minutes then, but it gave me peace of mind to know where I'm going instead of asking somebody and not knowing if that's a good hospital or, uh, or it wasn't. So this hospital, the Pablo Tobón Uribe Hospital is rated the number nine best uh, of Latin America. So I knew I would be taking good care of or that what I that was what I thought it will be when uh, yeah, I was lying down in the grass and thought, okay, so I will go to the professionals there. So what was really stressful is when we got uh, to the hospital in the ambulance, they put me on some kind of roller bed or something like that. They put me in because I couldn't walk uh, at that time. And the, the really bad thing is when we registered. So we drew, uh, my Colombian friend, we, which it was with me in the ambulance. He registered me, I was just sitting or laying down there. And yeah, he came back to me and said, yeah, I have bad news that the, the, the concierge with the, with the hospital or however uh, he's called said, the hospital is quite overrun with people, it's full. We will only take the people that are really, really seriously injured. Of course, this makes sense, but it was like, oh man, how long will that take? So yeah, that's, that was really a turn off, so yeah. But after some talking and after stuff, they took me in around, yeah, I was probably there for 45 minutes just in the waiting room. Nobody attended me, not, nothing like that. They took me in a room, did the first uh, evaluation and yeah. And this is like, when you read stuff like on international living and stuff uh, like, or any blogs or, or, or companies that uh, help other people relocate, you see that they will tell you, yeah, it's very easy. Yeah, the hospitals in Latin America are top notch. They have English speaking um, professionals there. And until we get to the specialist, which I will talk later, nobody spoke English so we had to do the whole process so I, either I spoke or I, I let my Colombian friend uh, speak all in English so if if I think about somebody else going there who does not speak English the process of registering to get you into the hospital uh, in the first place will be probably very very stressful because if they don't know that you have the money and if you can't convince them that you have money and will be able to pay that, uh, I don't know how that should work if you don't speak Spanish. So yeah, that's just my experience with that. I can't tell you any, anything different. So how was the quality of, how did they treat me? So like the staff, all in all was, of course, you have uh, nice people and I've done so, not so nice people. But overall, they seem like competent and they seem friendly. So, like, that was okay. So after the initial evaluation, they said, "Okay, we have to get an X-ray," which I didn't quite know why because I could explain that it was a muscle tear and not something on a bone. But yeah, they wanted to do an X-ray anyways. So for the X-ray, we had to wait another hour or so. Uh, they then took the X-ray. Then they had some issues with the battery on the x-ray, so I was laying on the table uh, for another maybe 20 to 30 minutes, which uh, if you know an x-ray should take around 5 minutes. So yeah, they had some issues with the battery, then they changed that, and uh, okay. So yeah, um, no hard feelings, uh, this is Latin America, I knew that, so yeah, that's that was alright. So. But then this was, so I injured myself at around 9 in the evening. And when I went to the x-ray, that was around 11. So and then we had to wait for the specialist to evaluate the pictures of the x-ray and see my leg to see if, the, if there's a, a tear, if there's a complete tear or what, yeah, why uh, I couldn't walk anymore. So we waited there in a like, they, they put us in some kind of special place. We were there by ourselves, like the Colombian friend, my wife and I. Um, my wife came uh, with a taxi from home she, because yeah, she wasn't uh, there doing sports with me or with us. So yeah, we waited there for like two hours to somebody coming to us. So this is around one o'clock in the morning. Um, 
to say, yeah, the, the specialist will come in around the one hour, he has a surgery or he's in the surgery room and yeah, they just don't have too many doctors around here at that time and this, yeah, we just have to be patient and wait. So we waited for another one and a half hours, so that should be around three o'clock in the morning and then a specialist came, he, he said no, um, no fractures in the bones and then he, yeah, did some work on my leg and said, okay, so it's not a complete tear, so that's what I, what I was afraid of. It's just a severe grade 2 sprain on my hamstring. So yeah, that was okay. So we were there around, when he finished with, uh, with working on me, well, probably around 3.30 uh, in the morning. Yeah, um, we said we're ready to go, we can go home and this will heal in, in, in a couple of weeks, so no problem. Uh, yeah. So this was really the best thing, the, the doctor there was quite competent, he understood English, but yeah, as I said, everything like that was in Spanish. So we talked in Spanish, my friends tried to translate when it got really technical, so yeah, that wa was, that's how it happened. So yeah, then they got like, they got me a wheelchair so I could uh, go, uh, go out, we had to, uh, to pay the, the bill right there because I have an international insurance, they will uh, refund me the the bill there, the bill was 500,000 Colombian pesos, which is around 170 US dollars. So very, very inexpensive compared to Switzerland and probably the US and many other uh, developed country places too. So yeah, we stayed in the, in the hospital for seven hours. And what really, yeah, what really is the bad thing about the whole experience is that for an x-ray and for some work on my leg to say okay no it's not a complete tear it's just a, a muscle tear in your hamstring we waited seven hours so from where, when it happened to when we could leave the, the hospital it was seven hours just for that like back home in switzerland or probably in any other developed world country this would take around two hours tops and we stayed in the in the hospitals for seven hours so that really sucked so yeah, but at the end, all of all, I have to say it wasn't too bad of an experience because I had my Colombian friend with me. We, I was clear in the mind, so that was good. Uh, we, it was like a night out, but not in a bar, but in a hospital. So we had great conversations and yeah, it wasn't too bad at the end. So I won't complain about that. And yeah, but really to, to get a picture of how it really is here in Latin America, it, of course, it's just one experience, but maybe it will help you to, to decide if Latin America could be for you or, yeah, maybe it helps you in, in some kind of way. Then another thing is that, yeah, as I said, if you read blogs and, and, and read articles from companies that help you relocate, they will say, yeah, the, 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 the hospitals are top-notch and everything like that. But what really shocked me is that I said, yeah, do you have some crutches for me? And they said, no, no, no. We, the best hospital here in Medellin, one of the best in Latin America, we don't have crutches. And I was like, what, what's that all about? So yeah, they just didn't have crutches. So <laughs> I don't know how really professional that is, but yeah, you can think about that. You can think of that whatever you want. Um, yeah, and I think my experience, if you probably have some, some some surgery or something like that you have you can plan your experience will be probably way better than if you have an emergency like i did uh, so i could could really see that that you have a great experience if you come here and have surgery i don't know um on your colon or or something like that where you go to a doctor you schedule an, a surgery then uh, you go into the room there into a private room there i think that could be a good experience of like how good then a surgery can be but if like the emergency procedure here yeah it's not that great this is latin america this is not the us this is certainly not switzerland so yeah this as a recap as i said maybe um this video helps you in some kind of way i just wanted to share that to how life really is here in latin america so yeah if you want to see more Real Talk videos like that, make sure to subscribe. We try to make a Real Talk video every week. So, yeah, stay safe and uh, don't let that encourage you, disencourage you to go Latin, to Latin America. So, yeah, hope it helps.